Welcome to another edition of The Gray Area. I'm Isaiah Rhodes. I'm here with Frank Tia, Frank, a, fr a frequent uh, collaborator. And Frank, I previously uh, released my reaction video to the NBA 75th anniversary team, mm -hmm. which coincidentally had 76 players because of uh, two players tied in terms of voting. So we had 76 players instead of the, uh, the marketed 75. But nevertheless, though, it's garnered a lot of reaction. Uh, there's been a lot of talks about who was left off, who should be on. Uh, a lot of people are poking holes in resumes about people that are on versus who's not. So I wanted to get your thoughts on it. Um, how do you feel about the list? How do you feel in terms of how the team, how the league rolled it out? And um, just your thoughts overall. Um, I think cool rollout, right? Um, it's a good list for the most part. Something get murky, right? I think I'm um, getting misconceptions about like who would be on and who wouldn't, right? I think, like we said previous before, it's only the list is an extension, right? So um, it's really only about 24 new spots as opposed to a 25 revamp, right? If that was the case, it would look a lot different, right? You can't disrespect other players, right? Because it's really hard to cross generations, right? So yes, of course, somebody like a Kyrie is probably better than Bill Sharman, right? Or or Paul Rosen. However. The list is based off how great somebody was relative to their time against their peers, right? So with that being said, you leave the original folks intact and you add other folks from 97 on. With that being said, it's fair for the most part, right? There is some question marks. Um, Reggie Miller is someone who has like legendary status, right? Of course. Um, but if you look at his total points scored, career average, I mean, accolades, they fall short. I think that there's this notion that, so with the Michael Jordan era is, is, is odd, right? Cause sometimes people think that he stopped everyone, right? Where some some players just weren't good enough to get there, right? Or wasn't getting there. So for example, it was a theory when people were saying, well, he got blocked by Michael. Nick Wright had to say, no, he played Michael exactly one time. Reggie was getting beat by the Knicks, right? That's the truth, right? Beat by the Knicks, right? So um, he wasn't going far until he finally broke through the finals in um, 2000. I believe he was the Pacers' second leading scorer, if I'm not mistaken, right? Um, so, yeah, Reggie's cool, but probably shouldn't be on this list, but, like, there's, like, a, a aura. He's a lifer, right? Um, you think about the theatrics, you think about what he did in the garden that propelled him. Um, there's, there's a big snub that I'm sure you'll get to, right, with Dwight Howard, right? He has an amazing resume, right? His res um, someone brought the fact that his, that his resume probably looks better than Patrick Ewing. Um, I don't know if I agree, but when I think it's probably closer than I give it credit for, right? Um, Dwight was the best big in the league for a while. People say, okay, cool, we, the league they have, didn't have bigs. That's not his fault, right? Um, he, 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 he was a defensive force. He did beat the Cavs, and in 09, he got, got to the finals, right? He had some monster numbers. He had a second in MVP finish voting, right? So when Dwight was great, he was really, really great, right? Um, I think folks forget that. So I think we can see bodies, like we mentioned earlier, folks are holding the fact that he's been a role player for the past eight years against him. However, if we're looking at the natural trajectory of people's careers, for anyone who stays this long, this is how they end up, right? You had the anomalies. You have the the the, the people who are great from the womb to, to the tomb, right? That's a Mike. That's a Magic. That's a that's a that's a LeBron, LeBron James. But for, for the most part, folks who are playing this long will have a it'll be an incline. It'll be a drop off, right? So this is this is that drop off, right? And he's still been serviceable, right? The Sixers picked him up um last year. The Lakers want him again to, to help him win the chip again, right? So. I think that's probably that, that's among the biggest snubs, right? Because he has individual accolades, he has or NBA teams, um, he has really good numbers, right? He has rebounding titles, block titles, I mean, so he has three he has defensive a, player of the years. Has a full, he has a full career, right? Looking back, he has an insane and in total, he has a he has a really good basketball resume, right? Um, Mr. Basketball in high school, right? Um, Gatorade Awards, so um, so yeah, so that was a snub. I'm sure we'll talk about some of the folks who people believe should be on the list that I'm, that we don't agree, but we'll get there. But yeah, cool list, right? Some snub, but I think for the most part, things are gotten right, right? There's maybe about three to five. We're like, hmm, it's questionable, but I think for the most part, it's a it's a fair list. I think one of the things that I thought was important was that they retroactively put Dominique Wilkins on, who many people thought. Uh, was snubbed back in 97. Now, anytime mm -hmm. we put these sure. lists together, you always have deserving players sure. in that gray area, yeah. no pun intended. 
uh, yeah. in that gray area that could be in debatable yeah. with some. So you have like players like Dominique Wilkins, Alex yeah. English. Alex English was a player who dominated in the 80s. He had eight straight uh, 2,000 point seasons, a record at the time, which has been surpassed a number of times. But nevertheless, though, the fact that he did it, um, a score extraordinaire. His game was never flashy, but yeah. to, to, to do what he did, he's a Hall of Famer. Uh, sometimes players get lost in the sauce. I yeah. think your point about the white being a role player recently for as long as he has mm -hmm. uh, really has thrown off how great he was versus uh -huh. a player like Anthony Davis, who was very, mm -hmm. very talented. Uh, yeah. By all accounts, he's one of the most skilled bigs we've ever seen. Uh, the fact that he can be a dual threat, both offensively and defensively, you don't uh, you, you don't mistake it or but you take into account, though, durability is important. Dwight Howard was extremely durable during his prom, played every game. Uh, his impact on a team that went to the finals gets lost because Reggie Miller went to the finals, but people remember that he was on Indiana forever mm -hmm. and he only got his one shot and he lost to the Lakers. It's unfortunate. But then when you look at Dwight, Dwight went to the finals. He lost. He lost to the Lakers also. He lost to Kobe Bryant. Um, he also went to the Eastern Conference Finals in 2010. Lost to the lost to the Celtics. Now, many people at that time believed that was a super team, right? Now, you had two, well, three players from that team. Obviously, Kevin, Kevin Garnett played on Minnesota also. But uh, you had Kevin Garnett make the top 75. You had Ray Allen make the top 75. You had Paul Pierce make the top 75. Paul Pierce is a four-time All-NBA player. He's a 10-time All-Star. He's a champion and finals MVP. That's cool. Is that better than eight-time All-NBA, uh, eight-time All-Star, uh, five-time All-NBA first team? He led a team to the finals, and Dwight has a chip. Now, he played a role on that chip team, a vital role on that chip team. He wasn't the best player, but Anthony Davis wasn't the best player on his championship team. So... How can you skip over Dwight and go to Anthony Davis? How can you skip over Dwight and go to Paul Pierce? You know what I'm saying? So it's like fringe, it's it's fringe players that I think made it and are deservedly so in an argument, but you can't get to those players before you get to Dwight Howard. That's my that's my issue with the list in that regard. I agree with that for sure. Right. Yeah, Dwight, Dwight is perhaps the biggest snub on that list. Sure. Um Another thing in terms of which I have an issue with is how people are responding to the, the list without really taking into account the, the point you made, which I, which I also ha have made on my, on my original video, just the, the idea that you're going to take the 50 that were already designated uh, off. No, maybe the way they're announcing the players is throwing people off. Like they're saying, oh, Michael Jordan has been named to the top 75 team. Duh, he was already a top 50 player. So you, I think because of how they're rolling it out, it's, mis, it's misguiding people in their thoughts. Like, oh, if they're adding Bill Walton, people think, oh man, Bill Walton is added to the top 75. He didn't do anything. Well, he was added back in 1950. He was, back, he was added back in 1997 mm -hmm. of his career the first time. Yeah. Um, so you see Bill Warren make the list knowing his injury history, knowing that he only played a certain amount of years at full health. Mm -hmm. And you think about Clay Thompson, you're like, how can he make it? But Clay Thompson, I mean, understand this. Clay Thompson is an exceptional shooter. Clay Thompson is a great player. Clay Thompson is going to be a Hall of Famer eventually. And his, his jersey is probably going to be retired with right next to Stephen Curry, Klay Thompson is not a top 75 player. At all. Because the, again, top 50 is already established. They're adding a new 25. The new 25 is basically the top 25 players minus Dominique Wilkins over the last 25 years. Mm -hmm. Which we get to, which I think is amazing we're getting the players that are still active. Yeah. You have a lot of players that are still active now. LeBron James, Giannis Antetokounmpo, 
Kevin Durant, Carmelo Anthony. You you have players that are oh, Damian Lillard, you know. You have players that are currently active, and that, and that shows you how dominant this recent generation has been. For sure. All right. Um, um, all, all great points. Um, today you showed me that Clay posted to – oh, well, Draymond posted to, um, I, I think, to Instagram – Clay in locker room with 77 on, on his jersey saying he was he's feeling he was snub. I'm like, I get it, Clay, but if the list went to 85 or 90, you wouldn't be on it either. Like, and this is the issue with recency bias, right? And also championships, right? Um, championships really count for go-to guys, right? And 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 franchise and franchise players. I mean, even more so for, for Robins, right? For for, for sidekicks. But as we get to third and fourth players, right? They count, right? But they don't hold as much weight against players who were really great and probably hadn't won, right? So, mm. yeah, Clay has been vital to the Warriors, right? We won't, like, we won't, like, invalidate that, right? However, on, on the chip they've actually won three, he's been the third. Sometimes you can argue fourth best player, right, depending on how you view him and Draymond's importance, right? And even on the finals they, they went to, he was the second best player in, in 2019, right? Um, how he not get injured, injured, they probably win, but... Like this is this is the guy who, if you replace him with a Devin Booker or a Bradley Bill, like, are the Warriors not as successful? Maybe they are, right? So I don't want to say he's not valuable, right? But um, to to carry on as if he's just like a egregious snub is just a little ridiculous, right? Because again, like you said, I'm I'm not sure people understand the sickness of two thousand points per year, right? And English has eight, right? There's like what? There's like four guys who, who have that. Let me put beside that or close to that, right? So that's like that's real sacred. Like you're talking about go-to scorers, right? Guys who defense is predicated to stop versus I mean it's a lot of cases the third but third option, which yeah, you you get your money, right? He he doesn't have a year over 20 points per game, right? Um sometimes he shot as many as eight threes per game. So so yeah, so he so he's good, right? But he also gets his touches, right? And and Defenses are keyed in. He has some ridiculous explosions, right? But again, um, other guys have 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 ex- explosive games. Also, Jamal Crawford has like four fifties, right? Um, no one is crying that he should be on, on this list, right? And I know he doesn't have championships. I'm just saying, for example, like if you want to use like scoring outbursts, we could go down a rabbit hole. So yes, really good player, right? Really vital. Maybe if they extend to 100, he win more championships, he'll be on it, right? But um, he doesn't come close to players who were left off this list, right? It's, and, and that's okay, right? I would say there's been thousands of players, right? If you're in, if you're in the top 100, top 150, that's a really, that's a great accomplishment. That's out of thousands, right? That's a really good percentile. Um, somehow people think it, 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 it's disrespect when you're, when you're off a certain list, but there's been a lot of players. So that's my, that's my piece on it. I think um, all great points too, especially when you think about um, one, one point you made was more so about uh, his roles on the team, on the teams that won. And I think that what's been uh, to tie into that, I think what's being missed is that or being glossed over is that because of his his stature next to Steph Curry, they have a good moniker together, the Splash Brothers. I think over time what has happened is people uh, have identified the war of success solely next to the Splash Brothers. And a lot of that is carried by Steph. Now, don't get me wrong. And you mentioned Clay's explosions have been necessary for Warrior success. You don't never want to take that away from him. But he has been afforded the luxury of having games of scoring 11. Mm-hmm. And nobody really bad an eye about it because Steph had 30, Kevin had 29. Kevin had 35, Steph had 32 with eight threes. So he can go through those stretches where he's not shooting. And then all of a sudden he has 14 threes and you're like, oh my God, Clay, you can't ever forget Clay. So because of how his role tied into Steph as a splash brother, it's automatically assumed that he's, he was always right next to Steph. Mm-hmm. Shooting wise, yes. As a player, no. Um, another thing that I've, I, that I've been seeing that has been misguided, and we speak about this all the time, but I think it's more poignant in this particular respect because of uh, the the importance of this list. Um, there's a difference between being a top 75 talent and a top 75 player. Um, yes. A lot of a lot of the names that we've been hearing that have been snubbed by you know the the masses that people are na- are bringing up. They're bringing up Kyrie Irving. 
Tracy McGrady. You know what I mean? And I want to say that while these players are extremely talented and during their time, uh, Kyrie's time is still going, God willing, uh, hopefully everything can get uh, cleaned up, obviously mm-hmm. with this vaccination situation and he can get back on the floor eventually. Uh, but we'll get, we'll get into that another time. But in, in, in particular to this list and in his generation, Kyrie is an exceptional talent. So was, Ky- so was Tracy McGrady. But it's about what you do with your talent, right? So an example being Tracy McGrady. Tracy McGrady made seven All-NBAs. He made seven All-Star teams. Yeah. He scored over 18,000 points, two-time uh, scoring champion. And you're like, yo, look at that resume, right? But when you measure him versus the, the people in his generation that made it, he's going to be left off the list. Because sure. he didn't he didn't have a playoff run. He never won a playoff sit and he never won a playoff series as the go-to guy. Mm-hmm. Or at any time. Um mm-hmm. the minute he got injured in 2009, the Houston Rockets uh went to the second round. And mm-hmm. then when he came back, they kept losing the first round. And then he had to you, you get what I'm saying? So it's like for him, he didn't make it. Grand Hill. People think about Grand Hill. The best version of Grand Hill is on it on the on the Detroit Pistons. He made a, he made five O NBAs. He made seven all-star teams. You're like, Grant Hill, he was amazing in the 90s. But he didn't win. And he got hurt. Unfortunately, he's not going to make the top 75. Mm-hmm. So it's like people are jumbling up what they think talent was, talent yeah. is, which everybody is talented to a certain degree, but you have those special talents. And then mm-hmm. you have the production on the floor that's been missing. Yeah, for sure. Um, there's a level of, particularly with Chase McGrady, right? Because um, mm-hmm. we're 31 years old, right? So um, we um, so folks our age don't remember Grant Hill as much, right? Because that's that's more so late 90s. Right? McGrady is 2000, so we were happy with teenager, right? But there's a music history, right? Like so, some folks will sit back now and call James Harden a choke artist, right? Because he he's had some bad showings um at crucial moments in playoffs, right? Well, he's always got there, right? And he's, and he's always had a decent playoff run, right? We're talking about second round, something like on the finals. Um, Chris McGrady, yes, had like a five year peak, right? So um, he got really good in 01, right? Um, from 01 to about 06 is like the the, 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 the mid of his career, right? Mm-hmm. Has has a few seasons over 28, two seasons over 28, right? Three seasons over 25, right? So that's great, right? Um, then playoff times come, yeah, like, he wasn't on the greatest of teams. He wasn't on bad teams either, right? He, he, had, he had a blown 3-1 in which his, in which he shot vastly worse than he shot during the first four games. He had the up the up 0-2 against 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 Dallas, Houston. right? Um, oh, he was yeah. on Houston against Dallas. Yeah. Dallas, right? Um, he ended up losing uh, ended up losing that one, right? Then he has the series against Utah. That's really a mono 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 series, right? Like. Dan Williams and Booza aren't supposed to be better than him or aren't looking better than him, right? And then, like, however good Booza is, um, Yao is as good, right? Um, so T Mac had a cool series, right? Um, but if we if we're going through the books, I'm pretty sure that we can't find a lot of series where elite scorers fail to score 30 um in the first at least one game um during their prime. Does it happen, right? So yeah, he did other stuff, but basketball and I mean if your score was score the points, score the buckets, right? So this is a series where it was his to win and they lost, right? Now you could argue um Jerry Sloan is probably a better coach than they had. But again, um he's if he just like catastrophic like talent like like folks say he is, then you have to sometimes lift your team, right? Even when the odds aren't the most favorable, right? And that's that also is an unfavorable odds, right? That's a fair series, right? That's an even series. So four, yeah so four, four or five series four, yeah, right? Five. Yeah. It's yeah. equal, right? And, and you look to be the, the best person supposed to be clearly. So it's, it's evidence where, like, we're not saying, not even, not 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 only does not have a, a playoff run, he doesn't have a series win, right? So 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 that's pretty huge. Then, like, after those five, six years, it's over, right? So that's great, right? But talking about, like, top 75, a lot of it has to be, like, the length of prime, um, productivity over time, your peak, right? And how long? He got he, he got seventy eight peak. Um, that's he he was good. He was great, right? But it's only seventy eight compared to guys who have a decade, right? And were productive and vital and valuable for, for over a decade. So, right. you know, um, he's not he. I I'm cool with him being left off this list, right? Some people are arguing Dame and Paul Pierce on the list, but he's not. 
um, Dame will end up being great for a decade, right? Um, for a decade, right? Dame has some of the most memorable um, series punches that we've seen, right? Um, regardless of what Portland is doing, right? Whether they, they how the team is or, or deliver injuries, he always he always gets to the playoffs. Um, and in in a lot of cases, he he get out the first round. So um, no, um, Dame is Dame is there, right? The guys who who've been left off, who folks are, who people online are upset about. Um, have been left off, I think, just a fly week. Is there anybody on the list that you saw that you would be okay if they weren't on the list? Um, Reggie Miller. Okay. Reggie Miller. Okay. Reggie Miller. Um, I, I like Paul Pierce's career. Um, but if, if, if it's a case where Dwight had to make it and Paul didn't have to make it, I'd be cool. But then you get in murky territory, right? Because the argument is, well, why Paul Pierce and not Ray Allen? Right. Um, and I guess they separated by two championships, but like Allen, but like a fifth option on Miami. So it's murky. So I, I think you have to explain more with players in the same vein who probably won together. You have to do more explaining as to why one guy is there and another guy isn't. So um, I don't want to say I understand, but if you take off Paul and leave Raiden, it's like, what's going on here? Right. Um, mm -hmm. So, yeah. So I, but if, if I had to go Paul, or Dwight, I'm going Dwight, right? So, so um, Reggie Miller is the person who I believe mm, I, I wouldn't have done that, right? Everything else, um, I think I'm cool with the justification of them being there, right? Um, but Reggie is probably the guy who, um, especially looking at looking at it like retroactively, right? Because he, someone who was playing during the first one, but like wasn't, of course, it wasn't like career with the finish. Yeah, I'm cool with him being left off the list, right? Um, um if if I I agree with you with Reggie. Paul, um, Reggie Paul, and Ray. Ray mm -hmm. Allen, I think, should be on because of the second ship versus Paul's one. Uh, mm -hmm. When they won in 2008, mm -hmm. the scoring between he, Kevin, and Ray are very, very close. Uh, he averages, uh, I, I want to say, 19.6. Mm -hmm. uh, KG is averaging 19, and Ray is averaging 17. Then when you go to the finals that year, Ray is averaging 21. Mm -hmm. uh, no, no, Paul is averaging 21. Ray is averaging 20. KG, yeah. KG is averaging 18 to 13. So it's like they're so close together. Yeah. I can't say because Ray uh, Paul is the leading scorer that he was that much better than everybody else. He wasn't. You know what I'm saying? Uh, so that's why I, I have that championship that all of them won to your point. You have to dissect it. I think that it was so close that I won't put one that much better, higher than the other, except for Paul got the finals MVP. Uh, the mm -hmm. one thing I say about Ray is that he got the second chip. He was the fifth option, but the shot that he hit was 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 series saving mm -hmm. for, sure. to, for Miami to go on to win. So uh, that's why that second ship is very, very important for his legacy. Yeah. Um, outside of that, though, their resumes are very, very similar. Um, Paul has four all NBAs to raise two, but Ray's uh, role as a top tier three point shooter kept him in the league for a substantial amount of time, even yeah. after his prime. Um, mm -hmm. but they're both 10 time all stars. Um, another player that I want to say, uh, which we mentioned earlier, uh, <laughs> Is Anthony Davis now? Anthony Davis, because of his talent level going forward, he's still very, very young. Mm -hmm. Like when his career is done, and you look at his resume, he's going to look worthy of being on this list. Very similar to Shaq at the time when Shaq made it, when he probably wasn't supposed to in age, but mm -hmm. looking back on it and how great he became, you say it's no question top fifty. Um, when AD is over, you're going to say no question about it, top seventy-five. But I think. Relative to right now and who was left off being the white, I wouldn't have a problem if AD was off of it. You get what I'm saying? Uh, the two that I would take off right away to make sure the white is on is Paul Pierce and Reggie, but I wouldn't have an issue if AD, Reggie, and Paul weren't on it. That's you know what cool. I'm saying? I so that's what, that's what I want to say with that. But I think overall, you know, when you put these lists out there, there's always going to be issues with it. Mm -hmm. uh, there's always going to be someone who has a problem with being left off. Uh, mm -hmm. There's always going to be players that are definitively going to be on and you don't think about it, no-brainers. But mm -hmm. 
this is why these lists are put out so that you can have the reaction that you do and that people that have followed the game for so long knowing the way that we do uh we we can dissect resumes on, and break down why but then you have those talented players that should have been here and they're not here so mm. it's, it's it's definitely good for conversation piece um this is 2021 2022 i don't want to keep you for too long um outside of it being the 75th anniversary season there's been a lot of um a lot of talks about new new algorithms and new teams and new new uh new super teams being put together all in preparation for this 2022 run looking at the way the teams are set up who do you have as you know premier going forward going to the finals like what are you looking at um i guess before the year i guess folks were saying consensus nets lakers right um Kyrie um may not be playing so that that's a that's a little in jeopardy i think the bucks can definitely um definitely have a shot now um to get it make it back to the finals um they show why they were the champion um in game one had a really good show against the nets um lakers haven't looked good um yet right um it's game two so i won't overreact like folks on twitter right but you um you are wondering like if this experiment can work right so so so, so that's a question Phoenix um looked strong that last night, but it's still early. So um I don't know. I think it's still close to call, but I think if things work out how people assume they'll work out, then we're looking at um LA making the championship. I think with the Clippers being with Kawhi being out, they have the best the best shot. Unless um yeah, unless Jamal Murray somehow comes back earlier or, or Phoenix can or Phoenix can can refine that magic. Then they can they have a chance of going back. I um, mean in the East, I think we're looking at a pretty a, a, what should be a good kind of final match between um, Milwaukee and, and, and Milwaukee and Brooklyn. And um, if Kyrie was there, I'd say the Nets are the, the hands-on favorite. Um, if um, if he's not there, then I think we're in for a pretty good series where um, where, where it could go either way. Mm -hmm. yeah. I, think, I think all that is valid. I think one of the things that people are, are missing, especially on both sides, Milwaukee being the fact that uh, – that uh, Giannis won a championship, yeah. his confidence is probably going to be much, much stronger now. Yeah. That's going to carry Milwaukee a lot further than maybe before where they were still trying to mm -hmm. figure out couldn't they win now that they know they can win and they did win. Yeah. Uh, I think that's going to help them. Uh, the thing about uh, Brooklyn, more so than anything, you brought up Kyrie, I think that this particular group is more focused on playing every game or trying to get every game in to build the chemistry as opposed to last year where they were very spotty. Um, mm -hmm. In terms of the Lakers, they won a chip in 2020. A lot of people speak about the injuries and recovery time based on being the shortest offseason. It kind of affected them. LeBron went down for 30 games. AD was down for 30 games. Injuries set them back. That was the narrative. Then they brought in all these pieces. Uh, you brought up the fact that, well, the experiment worked. The high-voltage names they have, the personalities that they have, Melo, uh, AD, Braun, Russell Westbrook, all these, uh, Dwight Howard. Trevor Reza, all these all these names, but will they coexist together? Can they get the the flow as a unit and win together? Sometimes you have too much talent and it throws off uh, role players. So we'll see how the Lakers do. Um, I'm, I, I agree with you in terms of the timing. It's very, very early, but uh, AD and Dwight Howard getting into it last night against Phoenix, that wasn't the best sign. So mm -hmm. we'll have to see how that goes. Um, We'll, 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 we'll definitely uh, tap back in throughout the season to see if our, if our predictions uh, level up. But I, I want to thank you for coming on and just really, really uh, breaking down the top 75 list. I know a lot of people mm -hmm. always have uh, gone to both of us in terms of our reactions, and we're definitely always tapping in on the post of the street in terms of social media and, and responses to what people are saying. So thanks mm -hmm. for coming on, man. Appreciate it. No problem. Thank you. All right, man, we'll be back on. Thank you to Frank Tier. Thank you guys for watching. Thank you guys for listening. Peace.